Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! At box ce soir, Alexandre Vachon et Brandon Tidball. Oh, alors, Eric Nielsen, Jonathan Tremblay. Alors, Gord et Kevin Cormier. Oh. scary situation. There is a Cape Breton screaming eagle on the bench. He is on the bench in the middle of that pileup with the Teton. That is George Davis on the bench and he jumped right into the bench and that's what we're talking about. What's up everyone and welcome to another episode of Five in a Game. I'm your host Jordan. I hope everybody had an amazing holiday. I mean what a time of year it is right? I mean it's so busy, so fast paced. I mean, everywhere's crazy, but you know what, guys? We made it through another one, so congratulations. I mean, Christmas is one of the best time of year. I really do enjoy it, but like at the same time, I mean, it's so busy for everybody around. I mean, you got to be at a million places at once. I mean, you got to go here, you got to go there, but the main thing is, is you spend time with your family. It's a good memories to have. I hope you guys had an amazing holiday. And New Year's is right around the corner, guys. So New Year, you know what I mean? New Year's resolution. I mean, my year, my New Year's resolution is I'm just going to try to get better at podcasting and doing my doing the YouTube channel and everything. I hope you guys are really enjoying it. I know a couple of the guys that I've done these on so far, I've reached out and they really enjoyed them. And that means a lot to me because it's, I'm focusing on their career and you know what I mean? I, it's 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 just awesome, and it's it's just it just feels good knowing that the boys enjoyed seeing themselves and going over their career. Like I remember, like Jimmy Bonneau, for example, said he forgot some of the guys that he's even fought and brought back a lot of memories. Uh, same with Marc Andre Wah and George Davis. Them guys really enjoyed it. So thanks so much, guys, for the support out there, and I hope you guys are really digging the show. I know I'm having a lot of fun with it, so. Yeah, guys, um, before we get into it, I just want to do my shout outs as always. I just want to shout out the fourth line, po- uh, fourth line voice podcast um, of Darren over there does an amazing job. Again, he's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Um, I always had like I had a lot of fun on his show and here I am doing my own guys. So thank you, Darren, for making this or making this a thing. Uh, Alec over at the five for fighting podcast. He does amazing work over there, guys. So go definitely check out five for fighting and fourth line voice. I'm sure everyone who's listening to this has definitely listened to them. So yeah, we all everybody. It's a big community. And like I said, Darren says it all the time. And we really couldn't thank you guys as creators for like, like, you know, reaching out and watching the watching the product and really, you know, helping us out and like and subscribe uh as always and yeah guys it really does go a long way so thank you so much um but let's get into it guys today's episode on the five for fighting number six number six i believe it is so we're we're getting them out there guys which is good and today is going to be a fun topic because we are doing none other than tommy bulldog ladies and gentlemen tommy bulldog i'm sure is more well known from his days in the LNAH days, but Tommy Balduke, before he went there, was a Quebec rampart, a Victoriaville Tiger, and a Shakutami Sh- Sh- Saguenay, sorry. So Tommy had one hell of a career, and it just how he was in the LNAH, same thing in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Tommy Balduke was a very, very tough cat, and I cannot wait to dive in the career of him today. I mean, it's going to be really, it's really fun. You know what? Today... Today's going to be a very exciting episode because I just can't wait to see the guys that Tommy has fought. And when I get this list out for you guys, it's going to be it's going to be something crazy. I mean, Tommy Balduk has fought every single person that you could think of in the LNAH ten times over. So his Q career is the exact same way. I know George Davis ended up on there. Guy I just did on my last one. His name is on there, of course, and a few others that we're going to go over today, guys. So yeah, so today we are going to go over the life and career in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League of Tommy Balduk. So Tommy Balduk was born February 14th, 1981 from Beauport, Quebec City. Tommy got drafted in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League in 1997, coming in at 75th overall by the Quebec Ramparts. 
Uh, Tommy got called up that year in the 1997-98. Uh, he played one game. He didn't get any goals, no assists, no penalty minutes at all. But then he comes into the 1998-99 season. He plays 54 games. He gets one goal, two assists, and 108 penalty minutes with eight fights coming in in his rookie year. Now, his rookie year, he takes on some pretty big guys at that time. He has a good, solid fight. With Michael Lanthier, uh, it's his very first fight in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Um, it seemed like there was like a little bit of a scrum there in the corner. Um, the ref kind of just taken Lanthier out of the way, but Tommy Balduk, he he at the top like. So for the guys out there who know him from the LNA hates the showboating, it kind of really came naturally for Tommy Balduk, to be completely honest with you. Tommy Balduk definitely didn't mind rubbing some salt in the wounds after his fights. Um, so some people, you know, have their different opinions on the cele celebrations after the fights, but this came naturally to Tommy, and it's just it's just the way he really it truly was. Like, he was a character on the ice. I mean, he definitely was a fan favorite for sure. Um, but that fight he has with Lanthier, it's his first fight in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and he does really well in it. He really and truly does. Um, the guy kind of, that Lanthier didn't really throw over as many as punches as Tommy Balduke, so I would say Tommy Balduke gets the win in that fight uh, for sure. It was a pretty good fight considering it was his first fight in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. So as the season's moving on, we're going into Tommy's second fight. He fights Antoine Bergeron. Um... These guys, you know, push and shove in the corner and all that stuff. Tommy is the first to get the gloves off. So Tommy's not even thinking at this point. If he finds any altercations whatsoever coming his way, he's not going to hesitate. Tommy Balduke is going to throw the gloves off, and he's just going to start swinging at you. And that's just the way it is. Tommy Balduke was a very punch first, punch some more, punch a couple more times, then ask questions later. So Tommy Balduke, like, honest to God, Tommy Balduke had a really good, solid really his rookie his rookie year like he had a good little fight there at the start with Lanthier he goes on and fights Bergeron couple of punches thrown nothing nothing crazy about this fight whatsoever but again Tommy gets the win in this one so Tommy's having a really good year fight wise um, so like I said, he's in there. He's got two fights under his belt. He goes and fights Serge Crochet. And these guys fight two times this season. And in my opinion, Tommy Paul Duke definitely got the better of him in the first one. Um, he also goes on to fight Robbie Sutherland. Robbie Sutherland was another guy who could really throw down in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He played for the Halifax Mooseheads and the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. Robbie Sutherland was definitely a really tough dude. Um, so, so far, like he's, he's fighting the who's who of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He then goes on to fight Richard Paul, Kevin Bergeron, and Patrick Churlo. Um, again, those guys were tough dudes, so they have really good fights. So Tommy's coming in his first year, like I said, eight fights. You know, eight fights isn't a lot over the last couple of guys that I've covered, but eight fights for Tommy Balduk in his first year of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. You know, it's it's something to be talked about, especially the guys that he fought. But it's the second season where Tommy really turns it on and really, like, comes into his own. And Tommy's name is getting floated around the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, like, for being a guy that will just fight on site. It doesn't matter. If you bump Tommy the wrong way, his gloves are coming off. Now we're heading into Tommy's second season. It's the 99-2000 season. Um, he racks up three goals, two assists, and 352 penalty minutes that year. Racking up 19 fights that season. Um, to name a few guys on that fight card that year, he fights Eric LaBelle, uh, Jean-Francois Babin, Bruno St. Jacques, uh, Serge Crochet again, Olivier Spinard, Gary Zink, Hulo, Hugo LeHue, and Francis Emery. So... He's got a good fight card for uh, having 19 fights. But that year, he didn't even lead the league in fights that year. So, like, that just goes to show you how much, like, the toughness there was in the queue back in the day. Um, for someone to have 19 fights now, it's just unheard of. Um, the league leader that year was actually Mario Jolly, coming in at 36 fights that season. Mario Jolly was real, real tough dude back in the day. I mean, that guy there... Uh, Mario Jolly is a tough cat, man. I mean, they had a couple guys going around that year, like uh, Benoit Boussoulet. Um, He come in at 28 fights. That's another dude, man, that was a tough cat, too. Um, and another guy, you guys are definitely going to know this guy, Martin Grenier also was in the league around this time. He had 20, 
21 fights that season. Boussole had 28. So that just goes to show you that there's a lot of willing and able guys going around. And, you know, Tommy, Tommy's one of them. Tommy Balduk is definitely one of them. That 90... 99-2000 season, I mean, there's a lot of tough guys floating around the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. I mean, Roberto Bessonette was in there. I mean, that's that was a tough, it was a tough year, the 98, or uh, the 99-2000. Um, they had a lot of tough guys floating around there. Like, I'll just name a couple more who was floating in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League that season. They had uh, guys like Trevor Ettinger was there, Nick Greeno, Sandro Sabraka, another tough dude, Ryan Flynn, Samuel Duplain. So the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League in its day filtered out a lot of tough guys, man. I mean, a lot of tough guys went on to play AHL, NHL. Uh, that came from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and guys went elsewhere, like the LNAH, for example, played a couple years in the coast. Um, just the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League should be recognized for having a lot of toughness and that these guys were in the league all at the same time. So, like I said, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League now, I'm going on a little bit of a rant about it. It is nothing. I mean, these players today wouldn't wouldn't step foot on the ice if they had guys like Tommy Balduke floating around, something like a guy like that, or like a Ryan Flynn, someone that's six six, you know what I mean? Two hundred and plus pounds of just pure monster. Trevor Ettinger, Sabraco, like the list goes on. So the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, whether they want to believe it or not, I know they've uh, every league now has turned a blind eye to it, and they're trying to oh look at me, it's all about finesse and all this. Regardless, your roots had a lot of tough dudes, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League bred a lot of toughness moving forward. So, like I said, that's a pretty tough season, the 99-2000 season, and it doesn't slow down. It really and truly doesn't. Like the list of that year, they have guys like Jean Francois Dufort, another tough dude, Mike Bray. Uh, some of the viewers out there will probably know him from the LNAH. Another tough dude, man. He played for the Mooseheads and the Montreal Rocket. Um, Mike Bray, another tough dude. Doesn't get enough credit. Hunter Lahash, the all-time penalty minute leader for the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He's in there this season. Trevor Ettinger's kicking around that season. Roberto Bissonette, Terry Duville. I mean, these guys like had a lot of tough competition in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League at this time. Um and Tommy has a really good season that year. He comes in and plays 37 games with the Quebec Ramparts, uh, 25 for Victoriaville, racking it up to be 62 games played. He finishes that season with six goals, 11 assists, and 468 penalty minutes. Um, I mean, that's a pretty busy season for anybody. It really, truly is. A couple of guys on that fight card for Tommy this year, some guys that stood out to me. Louis Robitaille, really tough dude. George Davis, of course. Um... If you didn't miss, if you missed that episode, I just did one on George Davis, the guy who got famous for jumping in the Acadie Bathurst T Tan bench. Uh, he took on Tommy Bolduc that year. Hugo LaHue, uh, Nick Greeno. He fights Eric Jean, David Cloutier, and takes on the Mountain Trevor Ettinger. So Tommy finishes the season like he he fights all the top guys that you could like fight at that time. Like I said, Tommy Balduke is pretty much well-known through the community for his time in the LNAH, which, don't get me wrong, that's an episode in itself. Tommy Balduke spent a lot of time over in the LNAH. I mean, if you guys have been watching and keeping up with the Five in a Game uh, YouTube channel and podcast, it seems like there's a lot of, you know, similarities. A lot of the guys that went from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League sprinkled over to the LNAH. They really and truly did. Um you know, it's probably because they spent majority of the time there, and most of the guys were from there. So I can't really, you know, give them any, you know, shadow or any, like, cast any, like, dark light on them for going over there. Um, Tommy Balduke did an amazing job in the LNAH when he did, when he went there. He really and truly did. Um, but like I said, I just wanted Tommy Balduke to be recognized for his time in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Um, he had one hell of a few seasons there. Um, he played for the he later on in the summer after that Victoriaville. He got traded to Shakutami, but he only played two games that season. I'm pretty sure this would have been his over eight season. So I'm sure Shakutami brought him in just you know see what he was like, and then you know I guess didn't work out for Tommy. He ended up having two games played, 26 penalty minutes, and one fight. He fought David Shishino. I mean. There's no footage of out there, but David Shishino, he wasn't in the league overly that long, so I'm going to assume Tommy 
probably got the upper hand in that fight. Uh, Tommy did go on to play a little bit of ECHL, UHL hockey that season. He did play hockey in the 2001-2002 season. So Tommy went on there, but his uh, career was basically known, in my opinion, for what he did in the Quebec Ramparts. Um, not that he didn't have a good season with the Victoriaville Tigers. No, he did. But Tommy really made his name with the Ramparts, and that's where Tommy really, you know, broke the broke the barriers and became a really good middleweight. Not that he, he did he did fight heavyweights, but his weight class to me would have been a middleweight type guy. But he did have a run in with a few heavyweights, like I said throughout this whole uh, this whole episode of Tommy Ball Duke. So, in my opinion, Tommy Ball Duke definitely deserves to be recognized. Um, he he had one hell of a career in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Um, so yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody who checked this episode out. It was a real fun one. Um, like I said, I I just try to give these guys credit. Um, there's not many people doing what we're doing out here with the fourth line voice and Alec over at the Five for Fighting podcast. There's only a select few of us guys. So every one of the listeners out there, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to the five in a game and i hope you guys really enjoy it and i hope you guys really you know it really it's a blast from the past for some of you guys i mean some of you i'm sure grew up watching most of these guys and um seen them a time or two so it's a little you know flashback for you guys i eventually will circle back to some of these guys who've had an lnah career because i'm a huge lnah fan as well um like Jimmy Bono, for example, he went on to play in AHL and played a long time there. I might even go into that water. Right now, five in a game, I'm just focusing on the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League tough guys. I am just getting started, but who's to say what's going to happen throughout the 2023 year? You know, what? you never know, right? I might start sprinkling out and testing other waters, but these guys, I definitely want to be recognized for their Quebec Major Junior Hockey League career because this is where that all started before these guys branched off and went in their different directions, and it all started in the queue. So, again, thank you for listening. I really appreciate you guys out there. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time here on Five in a Game. And this is what I'm concerned about down the stretch. This could get out of hand. The fans love it. But boy, oh boy, the two coaches have to be careful in a situation like this. It could get ugly.